just like a child who trusts his father dear and whose delight to feel his presence near. Just like a child whose mind does not have doubt and whose heart is never proud. Here I come, O oh Lord. Here I come, just like a child. Here I come, O oh Lord. Here I come, just like a child. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us pray in a very special way for all the intentions that you have been requesting us to pray for. Let's also bring our own personal intentions Let's pray for our family members. During this Holy Eucharist, let us in a very special way reflect on this term, accompaniment. The Lord is always there to accompany us. He is journeying with us, He is walking with us day in and day out. And oftentimes we don't realize His presence with us. And we always tend to move away from his presence. For the times we have failed to understand his accompaniment, for the times we have moved away from his presence, let's feel sorry and ask the Lord's pardon and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God, brother, sisters, I have sinned. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory be to God in heaven. Glory be to God on high. Glory be we give you thanks for the glory of the universe. Peace on us to all creation. Honor to all God's friends, peace on us to everyone, through the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son of the sacrifice, Lamb of God who bore our sin, must say and receive our prayer, you alone are Lord of creation, you alone are the only one, you alone are three in one, Father, Son, Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, 
in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the leaven, lifted up his voice and addressed the multitude. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs which God did through him in your midst as you yourselves know. This Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. But God raised him up having loosed the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will dwell in hope, for thou wilt not abandon my soul to hates, nor let thy Holy One see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou wilt make me full of gladness with thy presence. Brethren, I may say to you confidently of the patriarch David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet and knowing that God had sown with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of Christ that he was not abandoned to hates, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we all are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Let our response be, Preserve me, Lord, I take refuge in you. Preserve me, God, I take refuge in you. I say to the Lord, you are my God. O Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup. It is you yourself who are my prize. Our response, preserve me, Lord, I take refuge in you. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel who even at night directs my heart. I keep the Lord ever in my sight. Since he is at my right hand, I shall stand firm. Our response, preserve me, Lord, I take refuge in you. And so my heart rejoices, my soul is glad. Even my body shall rest in safety. For you will not leave my soul among the dead, nor let your beloved know decay. Our response, preserve me, Lord, I take refuge in you. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence. At your right hand, happiness forever. Our response, preserve me, Lord, I take refuge in you. Second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter, chapter 1, verses 17 to 21. If you invoke as Father him who judges 
each one impartially according to his deeds conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile you know that you were ransom from the futile ways inherited from your fathers not with perishable things such as silver or gold but with the precious blood of Christ like that of a lamb without blemish or spot he who destined before the foundation of the world but was made manifest at the end of the times for your sake through him you have confidence in god who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in god the word of the lord thanks be to god gospel acclamation alleluia alleluia lord jesus open to us the scriptures make our hearts burn within us while you talk to us alleluia the lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to saint luke chapter 24 verses 13 to 35 on the first day of the week two disciples were going to a village named Emmaus about 7 miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about all things that had happened while they were talking and discussing together Jesus himself drew near and went with them but their eyes were kept from recognizing him and he said to them what is this conversation which you are holding with each other as you walk and they stood still looking sad then one of them named cleopas answered him are you the only visitor to jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days and he said to them what things and they said to him concerning jesus of nazareth who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before god and all the people and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him but we had hoped that he was the one to redeem israel yes and besides all this it is now the third day since this happened moreover some women of a company amazed us they were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body and they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said but him they did not see and they said to them o foolish men and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken was it not necessary that the christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory and beginning with moses and all the prophets he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself so they drew near to the village to which they were going he appeared to be going further but they constrained him saying stay with us for it is toward evening and the day is now far spent so he he went in to stay with them when he was at table with them he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them and their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished out of their sight they said to each other did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road while he opened to us the scriptures and they rose that same hour and returned to jerusalem and they found the eleven gathered together and those who were with him who said 
the Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, this is one of the most beautiful readings, the Gospel readings, which we have extensively used for our catechetics, for our youth ministry, for various other types of ministry. Because this is a beautiful passage where we see Jesus accompanying the disciples. It is also said, Luke has very well written this, this particular episode and it is a kind of uh, master storytelling, typical to Luke himself. You see how the narrative unfolds, like the narrative in the, in the films. The interesting aspect of any film is this. The audience will know what is going to happen while the characters there in the, in the play, in the film, will not know what, was going to, what is going to happen. So also here we see the one who was talking to these two disciples is Jesus himself. As readers, as audience, we will know it. Whereas the characters involved over there will not know till the end of the passage where he breaks the bread. So it is a beautiful, skillful storytelling of Luke. And we see the, the two part, the segment, two segment present in this particular passage, uh, where Jesus walks with the disciples and prepares them by breaking the word that eventually takes them forward for the next important moment of breaking the bread. This is what happens in the everyday Eucharist. Everyday Mass, this is what we do. The first half of the liturgy, we have the breaking of the word. We have the first reading, we have the second reading, we have the gospel reading, we have the responsorial psalm, we have the, the homely. All this, this whole liturgy of word is supposed to prepare us to receive the Eucharistic Lord. That is what Jesus does. And we also see two, two of these guys, Cleophas and the other person's name is not mentioned. And some of the interpreters would say, Cleophas, okay, it, it, they have given him an identity. Whereas the other disciple whom they have not given any identity represents you and me. We see Jesus doing a wonderful ministry with these two young disciples. Number one, any ministry involves encounter, which we have already reflected, but still a little more elaborate way of looking at it. Encounter. So Jesus goes and encounters his disciples on their way back to Emmaus. It is not the other way around. This is not disciples who are coming to encounter God. It is God going and making an encounter with his people. This has always been the, the experience of the chosen people of Israel. It was always God who makes the first step. And this encounter is most important element in any ministry. It's not just ministry, it is our, our everyday living. If I am a parent, I need to do my, I, I have to encounter my children. Now, this encounter demands a, a lot more, a lot more, uh, a uh, lot more moving out of my space. For instance, all these days, when, when, when we were free from all this lockdown, and when the whole uh, epidemic you know, was not there, you as faithful were all going to the church and the ministers over there, the, the priest for instance, we were encountering you in a space which was already prepared. There was, there's always church and you are all coming over there and there is a fixed time, okay, at 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock or whatever time that was fixed for mass, you are all, you're all there and we make an encounter with you, which is very easy. It, take any inst institution for that matter, in a college, in a school, we all encounter children and this encounter is very uh, uh, easy encounter where people come over there 
my my beneficiaries come over there my participants come over there and i make my encounter which is quite easy it's not, it, it's it's not very difficult but today because of all this lockdown as ministers we have to encounter you where we have to encounter the place where you are so therefore i need to move out of my comfort zone and encounter you and that is why you see all all of us who have never been used to be in front of cameras we are all going live we are all recording on us and we wanted to take it to the families because we can encounter you only in the families right now it demands a lot of hard work it demands a lot of you need to move out of a comfort zone people who have never been used in front of in, in front of the cameras we have to do it why this this is encounter if i have to encounter my children i have to encounter them in the space where they are if i have to encounter my youngsters i have to encounter them in the space where they are where where they, where they are present now today where are the youngsters present in the social media space they are there in instagram they are there in in whatsapp they are there in, in various other platforms and if i as an adult who is going to encounter them who has to encounter them who has to accompany them sit in a comfort zone and say i'm not going to enter that world which is an annoying world for me i'm going to be here and still i'm going to encounter that is not going to be an encounter at all how are you going to make meaning for those youngsters who are living in another space if my children's world is gaming i and i say i, I don't want to know anything about gaming how am i going to encounter my kids because their their world is there that is where they are present therefore you see this encounter demands us to move out of a comfort zone and meet people where they are it is not the other way around allowing people to come to me and then i make an encounter that's an easy encounter here you see jesus going after disciples that is the beauty of encounter as a minister as a parent as anyone for that matter i move out of my comfort zone and meet my children meet my beneficiaries meet my people in the place where they are not the other way around bringing them to my place and make an impact on that that is that is not very meaningful and that is what jesus does it here second as we have already discussed the second important element in any any ministry for that matter is encouragement encouraging appreciating you see jesus of course there is not jesus is style after the after the uh, resurrection episode also he never goes and says you, you, he never condemns them whereas in the in the in the first readings we mostly we see peter accusing the the jews you are the ones who kill you are the ones who kill jesus never uses the tone he never accuses people he always encourages them he he breaks the 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 word he makes sure that their hearts are burning he 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 gives them he puts them in a particular comfort zone so therefore appreciation encouragement is the most important thing that we need to do every day we need to encourage our children we need to appreciate them i remember whenever we do sessions i conduct a game called uh, appreciation chair we place one chair right in front of the in the middle of our in our session and make make some participants to sit over there one by one and ask all the other participants to say one good word about the person who is sitting in the, in the in the chair and you know at the end of the session people are so happy they get to hear what have, whatever they have not heard so far in their lifetime and constant encouragement you know how much it can lift the soul of people do we do we appreciate our people at home your mom is cooking for several years have you ever said one day mom you are you are awesome your cooking is so good we eat so well we finish so many number of plates but we still say our oh, salt was less you added more spice today it was not very palatable that is how we, uh, uh, we live our life and for instance our children if they come out okay they are they are able to get some score they are able to get some marks tell them you are very proud of them tell them that you 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 love them so much tell them they are they are beautiful tell them they are awesome it's not just for the sake of saying because you and i we, we are longing to hear this appreciation but we never want to give to the others and sometimes this dad uh, figures dad figures men figures i don't know we are we are so obsessed with with, with these little things that we don't want to even open our mouth and say some good things 
we always want to say that is not right this is not right don't do this don't touch that say things which are nice to people pleasant to people encourage them you are good you, you, if if you are a mother in law struggling with your daughter in law tell your daughter in law that she looks pretty that she is she is such a good girl if you are a, if you are a daughter in law tell your mother in law that that her her selection of dress is so good that her voice is so sweet even if it is not so you know what happens this encouragement is very important appreciation is very important without appreciating each other i am sure no connection will happen no relationship will happen see it's not for the sake of saying but you mean certain things and tell people be be little more even i am so happy these days you are all able to give me some good feedback sometimes i also say in the church even if your pastor is boring you to death even if it's a long sermon you 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 have slept off completely at least at the end of the the service come and tell your pastor father you made me to sleep i'm so happy all these days i was suffering with insomnia but today i had a good sleep at least say that people just walk out people we move out even in the families we don't look at each other and say one good word that is it encouragement and the third most important element is of course empowerment this is what jesus is doing he empowers the disciples by breaking the word by breaking the bread and you know what happens they are on their own they get back to jerusalem when they are going back to jerusalem they don't require jesus to be walking again with them they are self sufficient they are able to move forward of course the presence of the lord is always with them this is empowerment i always uh, use this Uh, analogy one of my close friends uh, father mani lazaru is a good friend of mine he uses this analogy especially in the wedding masses i i i would like to also uh, requote it here uh, he says no parents are like the two wheels that is attached to the the bicycle when we when we teach our children to uh, ride the bicycle you know we attach two small little wheels that goes along and so that this little kids are able to balance parents role is like those little two wheels that support the bicycle so that the child will not fall a fall but imagine for 25 years 30 years even after the child learning to ride the bicycle you attach those two wheels and keep moving forward with them is there any joy of riding the cycle it is going to frustrate the kid frustrate the child also frustrate the parents once you know the children once i know my beneficiary once i know with whom i am working they are self sufficient they can manage their life let them go let them be independent let's not keep them till you are my child whatever it is you are my child even after 25 years after after marriage and things like that. this is what is creating confusion in all the families till today if you are if your dad of or mother or a mother in law what are you still want to say i know things better than him i know things better than him this is not empowerment let them let them be on their own this is the most important part of ministry if of course they were they were all dependent on us for so many number of years but they cannot be depending on us till the end of their life and if our ministry is that way if you are going to keep them always under our wings it is not at all going to be good you know what even this chicken and things like that they they literally chase their kids move away be on your own make mistakes and learn of course we are there accompaniment we never forsake people we are always there physically present if possible spiritually present we are always be there but not to the point of choking them you know this is what is frustrating most of the people at home even these days when we are at home during this quarantine period you know when if you are going to be saying for everything you have to have your opinion this is not empowerment so my dear friends you see this passage can be interpreted in various ways it is divided into two beautiful segment liturgy of word which is very important we need to read the word of god and prepare our mindset to be disposed to receive the second most important element happens liturgy of the eucharist this is how the whole passage is structured and in the ministry we have to follow this three steps first let us encounter people in the place where they are let us encourage them generously finally let us empower them to the point where they are independent with their with their own wings flying freely without depending on us 
Let us pray the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. I request all those who are watching, this particular mass from, from various gadgets. Let us close our eyes for a while and pray for various needs. Let us join the whole universal church. Let us join the families which are right now participating in the Holy Eucharist and all the other families which are participating in the Eucharist that is, that is available for them in various other, other media. Let's all pray together as one family. Let's pray for our Holy Father, for Francis. And you know how bad the situation in Italy, in Rome. Let's pray that the Lord may soon step in in a very strong way and eradicate this whole pandemic by inspiring some doctors, inspiring some people to come out with the right vaccines. Let's also pray for people who are suffering, victims. There are a lot of people who are dying, a lot of people who are in fear. This disease, this virus has caused such a big havoc to the whole humanity. Sometimes we may not realize it's, it's a very sad reality. We really need God's protective hand, His accompaniment at this juncture. People are struggling without food, without provisions, without financial stability. Let's pray for all of them. Let's pray for the children, for our youngsters who are going through a lot of psychological depression. It is affecting physically, Emotionally, psychologically, let's pray that the Lord's healing touch might be there, His accompaniment, accompaniment might be there within all of us. Let's also pray that this whole bad experience may instill, may, may help us to deepen our faith in the divine. Mama Mary, be with us, protect us, intercede for us as you did the wedding at Cana. Bless all of us that we might restore our daily life, our usual occupations as early as possible. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, accept this bread and wine. Take our hearts and make them thine. Take our world and our anxiety. Give us life and liberty. This bread into Christ's body and this wine into his blood. Change our life, make us united, Lord, to spread the love of Christ our Lord.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given a cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit and perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your heart, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as a Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for your holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess the resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and George Anthony Sami, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to our Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The disciples recognize the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Alleluia. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh 
the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass ascended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.